Today we've got the brand new RSD Sargent V5 in for a first look. I love RSD bikes. They're so much fun and they're quite unique and they're very affordable for what they are. This is the Sargent V5. I'm so excited for this. Now I've got a little bit different package than what you've got when you'll buy a Sargent. You can buy this bike in three different combos. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. I've got all the parts here to make it all the combinations and I'll be reviewing all three different builds for it. RST bikes are not as built as many other brands, so you have to do a little bit more of the work, but they've done all the hard work. They put the headset cups in, they've put the bottom bracket in, they put the cranks on. It's pretty much ready to go that way, so you don't need any expensive tools, but it does require more work to assemble than a lot of other brands. But that's one way that they're able to save on the cost and you're able to bond with your bike while building it. I think everyone should learn to work on their own bikes and this is a great way to get familiar with a bike without having to fully build a frame up. A full frame build takes quite a bit of skill and tools, but this is a good intermediate step. Oh yeah, <laughs> you've got some 27.5x4.0s. I'm excited to try those. The Sargent is one of the most versatile bikes I've ever ridden. It can do so many things. The last one I had in was a V3. The V4 had some great improvements and the V5 has some really great improvements. I'm excited for this. RSD stands for rubber side down. They're a small company out of Toronto, Canada and they have some of the best customer service I've ever seen in the industry. Ooh, this black and like army green looks really good. RSD uses nice big aluminum tubes. This is size medium. I'm five foot six. I like longer bikes. Alex is 5'10", and he rides about the same size frame I do. So he's all legs and I'm all torso. So we actually end up riding the same bike despite being different sizes. We've got 175 mil race face cranks RSD does that quite a bit. A lot of people are going shorter cranks. And not just for reduced pedal strikes, but for smaller circles while you're pedaling. If you haven't seen my crank length experiment video, go check that out. That was one of my favorite, favorite videos I've done. So just like the last Sargent and the one before that, this is super boost. So it's 157 mil spacing. That means the rear end is wider and your traditional boost wheels do not fit in here. You need a super boost wheel set. Normally, I would not be a fan of super boost except for what this bike can do. This bike can fit 27.5 plus, 29, 29 plus, so 29 by 3.0, and 27.5 by 4.0. You can run it rigid, you can run it suspended. This bike is extremely versatile. It's got sliding dropouts like all RSDs, so it can be run single speed or you can keep it geared and just change the, the, the length of this chain stay, whether you want that planted longer feel where it stays on glued on the ground a little more or you want that short, playful bmx -y feel with the short chain stays. I love short chain stays and the V5 has the shortest chain stays they've ever had. Alex has done some really cool stuff to fit big tires in really close and that gets me really excited. We've got that still nice slack head angle, nice long reach, short rear end. This is the perfect combo that made me fall in love with the middle child. And it just makes their bike so much fun. And I'm a big fan of what they're doing. All right, let's get this thing built up. It's going to take me a little while because as you can see, there's no dropper. Um, I need to put a drivetrain on, wheels, brakes, shifter, all that stuff. Uh, I opted for my own electronic wireless shifter just for ease of building this up to make it a little bit faster. Anyway, this thing's beautiful. It's so beefy. All right, let's get her built up. I just noticed this thing also has rack mounts. Talk about versatility. I think this is going to be a fun bike packing rig. And I've actually been wanting kind of like a lower travel, kind of more explorer, adventure, maybe even trail bike with, you know, not super radical geometry. And I think this might do that really well from RST. These frames are made in Taiwan. Taiwan learned a lot of their manufacturing skills and processes from Japan, which is renowned for being super high end and super attention to detail when they make stuff. And Alex is extremely picky about which companies he uses to build these. And this is built by one of the best frame builders in Taiwan. So the attention to detail and the quality is amazing on these things. And Alex pays a little bit more to have these go to that high-end factory 
Rather than finding the absolute cheapest place he can get to knock out this frame, he believes quality is worth a little bit more money in the long run. So yeah, you could probably find a frame on AliExpress cheaper than this. It wasn't built in the same factory though, I'll tell you that. RSD Specs DBO Suspension. This is a Diamond D3. This is not available aftermarket. The D3s are only available OEM spec, but it's a wonderful fork and it allows you to not have to worry about replacing this down the road because it comes with a high-end fork. A high-end fork is a big deal. Um, a lot of people will spend $1,500 on a bike with a low-end fork and then realize, uh, you know, six months later, oh, I got to drop seven to 900 on a new fork to make this bike perform better. And then they should have just bought something like this that was already in that class that came with a great fork. Now, RSD has already cut the steer tube length and pounded in the star nut, saving you time and tools. Wonderful. And they left it plenty long so that I can run some spacers and run different stack heights. I'm trying this new grease by Ride It Slick, the guys from SCC Tech that make my favorite chain lube. It's very soupy, but super high tech grease. It can be used for all sorts of things, including stanchions and fork rebuilds, uh, bottom brackets, droppers. I'm going to try and use it as a multi-purpose grease on just about everything to see how I like it over time. I'm going to stir it up a little bit because it kind of, there you go, now it's a little bit thicker, a little bit. But we're going to try it out. I'll let you know what I think of it. I'm extremely impressed with their chain lube and their cleaners. In a previous job, I made instructional videos. It'd be fun to build a how to build your RSD video. That'd be a lot of fun. Looks like a 50 mil stem on here. I know the trends to go shorter and shorter. We'll try it with the 50 mil. See how we like it. On my adventure bikes, I actually really like 50 mil. Sometimes I feel like shorter than 50 mil makes it hard to steer. Oh, that's so nice that the steer tube's already cut. You get the feeling that you're building up a frame with an RSD, like I said, without having to use all the specialty tools. I think they've struck a nice balance between what most do-it-yourself home mechanics can do. If this is your first bike ever, get a buddy to come over. You're probably not gonna figure it all out on your own. But if you've built up a bike or been around bikes and tweaked things like change your bars or change the stem, you should be able to build this, no problem. Let's route our cables. Oh, thank you, Alex. Full external cable routing. I think all adventure bikes should have that. Well, I think all bikes should have that. I am in love with the idea of this bike. Every once in a while, I get a bike in for review that kind of haunts me. And after riding it, I just end up loving it so much. I buy it off the company. That's what happened with my other middle children. That might happen with this guy. This thing is cool. We'll see. I've got so many bikes. The last thing I need is another bike. But sometimes when you review it and it's just super special, you don't want to let it slip away. I've got quite a few bikes that I've done that with. Oh, I love external routing. That is the way to do it. So this has a 140 fork on it. A lot of people don't know this, but the guys that started DVO are the original OG Marzocchi bomber designers. They split off after a while and started DVO. And so they really know what they're doing. Those Marzocchi bombers were a game changer back in the day, like 99, 2000. I remember I had a Z1, a 150 mil. Z1 on a 26 inch hardtail. Oh man, that thing was fun. My old Azonic DS1 dual slalom frame. That was really fun. And th that fork just totally changed mountain biking for me. It was a coil fork. Man, I love that thing. So yeah, these guys at DVO have been around a long time doing great stuff. It's really hard finding forks that fit 29 by 3.0. So we're gonna see if this Diamond D3 does. Um, I think it's the fender that's the problem on this one. 29 by 3.0, I'm gonna pull the fender off. 29 by 3.0 is not the world's most popular tire size, but man, do I like it. It rolls over stuff so well, it's a fun adventure tire size. And yes, it's quite different than a 29 by 2.6. Let's see if it'll fit. Please fit, please fit. Oh, that's close. But it fits, oh yeah, it fits. We got five mil clearance all around, top, bottom, and sides. What I should do is let out all the air and make sure the tire does not contact the crown on full compression. You should always do that. So it's hard to understand the sheer size of a 29 by 
3.0 if you haven't seen it. That looks like just a couple millimeters of clearance, but compared to my finger, that's quite a bit of clearance. So I have no concerns about that, but with the fender on, the fender does not clear. Way to go DVO and way to go RSD for specking a fork that fits 29 by 3.0. That is rad. So even though I've got 29 by 3.0s on at the moment, this bike, I think I'm gonna review it mainly as a 27.5 plus. That's how a lot of people are gonna run it. And the main difference is bottom bracket height. So you could run it 27.5 plus or 29 plus. As 29 plus, it's gonna have a taller bottom bracket. As 27.5 plus, it's gonna have a lower bottom bracket. All your other angles are gonna be the same, but uh, that's worth noting. And Alex said, oh yeah, definitely run it as a 27.5 plus first. See what you think about it that way. Cause I kind of had that in mind when I designed it. So we'll try it that way first. So this build is not hundred percent stock that I'm doing. I'm providing a few of my own parts. I'm putting on my own 27.5 by 3.0 up front here on a Knight Composites carbon rim. They don't make this rim anymore. I love this rim, a uh, very soft rim. But uh, yeah, that was just a deal I had with Alex is he'd give me two rear wheels if I provided my front wheels for this review and that made sense for shipping reasons. Anyway, this is 27.5 by 3.0 up front. Fits beautifully in this fork, no problems at all. And then we're gonna put a 27.5 on the rear. And these, I love that Alex does this. He ships his 27.5 bikes with the proper width rim. This is a Sunringel Duroc 50, a 45i rim that allows you to get that full volume of a 3.0. And also it's wide enough you can run the 4.0 on this as well. You know, a lot of people are gonna have a dedicated wider rim for their 4.0s for the fat setup but I love that this is compatible enough that you could run both. It's not the world's lightest rim because it's a lot of material on there, but they're strong, solid little rims. The hubs are fine. They're not the highest engagement, but they're fine. And you could always lace this up with a special hub of your choice one day, but it's cool that these come with properly wide rims. That's pretty rare to see. I see a lot of 29 by 26 bikes come in with 30i rims and that's just too narrow for a 2.6 so awesome to see we're going to run full three o's on here and have plenty wide of a rim to do that the tires mounted up beautifully on these rims super easy i want to give a huge shout out to orange seal they're not a sponsor but they provide me with sealant so that i can review all these bikes i wouldn't be able to afford to review bikes i'd be just buying sealant and wouldn't even be able to cover the cost of that so huge shout out to orange seal for doing that if you like this channel and you've learned from it and you'd like to support it in a small way i've got a link down below where you can donate or you could always become a patron and we can talk bikes and specs and i can give you some consultation advice on what bike i would recommend for you i love doing that and that's how i support this channel sweet tons of clearance let me show you this is rad we got the chain stays all the way forward in the shortest position Check this out. We got at least seven mil there. Let me see if I can get this angle right. Seven mil on that side, a full centimeter on that side, and tons up above. We're gonna throw my 29 by 3.0 on here, just to size it up. We got the chain stay slammed. It's not quite fitting slammed. Let me pull the chain stays back a little. This is so hard to do. 29 by 3.0 is like 30 and a half inches tall. It's usually the height as much as the width that causes the problem. Let's see. This is a boost, not super boost wheel. So not going to be perfect, but it's going to show us tire clearance. All right. So all the way forward, where does it rub first? Oh, okay. Interesting. It's rubbing the seat tube. So the only way they could get a shorter stay is to move the seat tube forward like we did on the Maniac. So I'm gonna pull it back just a little. Like I said, the height is the biggest challenge, not the width. Hey, we're about halfway on the dropouts. All right, so we're halfway on the dropouts and here's what our clearance looks like. Three mil clearance there and three mil clearance there. That's pretty tight. So for 29 plus, you're not going to be able to run it all the way forward. You're going to have to bring it back at least a little bit. Interesting. Still 29 by 3.0. That's huge. Let's measure that measurement real quick on chainstay. 
436. So 436 chainstay, you'll still fit 29 plus. That's still better than many, many other uh, frames on there. Very cool that we can still fit 29 plus on it and we can still slide it back if needed. I need to talk about the Super Boost Plus thing a little bit, this 157 rear spacing. This bike would not be possible without it. And I'm glad they didn't go full fat bike rear end. I think that's just a little bit too wide of Q factor. Your cranks are a little bit wider. You feel that in your hips after a long day. They were able to keep it short. This is a Super Boost crank set, so the, the Q factor is a little bit wider than normal, but not as big as a fat bike. What the wider axle allows you to do is move the drivetrain out away from the tire and away from the frame a little bit more so that we can fit wider tires. Without that wide axle, the angle of the chain would be so dramatic, it would either rub the tire or it wouldn't fit that big of a tire in there. So it's necessary for this. A lot of companies, it's not necessary. They like it. They like that little bit better chain line. I have no problem with Super Boost other than all my other bikes are Boost and my stuff can't swap back and forth. But that's a problem of a bike reviewer, not so much a problem of the everyday mountain biker because most people buy their bike and the wheels that come on it and they're not swapping seven different wheels on it like I am. But uh, I'm not opposed to Super Boost in the slightest in this setting. It makes a lot of sense here. These come with really nice parts. Race face cockpit, bars and stems, race face cranks. Our bars are 780 wide. I review every single bike at 760. That's my bar width. A lot of people forget to do that. I get a lot of people saying, man, my bike doesn't fit. It feels huge. And they're 510 running 800 mil bars. And that's just going to, a wide bar is going to pull you forward more and make your bike feel bigger. Some people want that. Some people don't. But it's good to know your bar length and always measure your bar length. I need to do a whole video dedicated to bar length. But I'm going to cut a centimeter off each side of these bars. It's only a centimeter, but it does make a difference when you're riding it. Okay, it's all built up. The only thing I got to do now is shorten this loop of rear brake housing. Probably need to shorten it a good six to eight inches. They probably send the same length on all sizes, which would make sense. You know, an XL would have a longer reach, would need a longer hose. That way, RSD doesn't have to spec a million different brakes. But that means you, as the builder needs to adjust that. Fortunately, RSD included olives and barbs to be able to do that. But if you're new, this can be a little bit intimidating for a lot of people. Still a lot of bikes, even brand new bikes. Some bikes are better than others at getting uh, the, the housing lengths right. But that is a little bit overwhelming for some people. It still functions, but look, we got a whole bunch of loop up here. We're going to fix that. Just got this beauty all built up, the RSD Sargent V5. There's some really cool stuff going on here. Let me walk you through it. Sliding dropouts, we've got them slammed all the way forward with the 27.5 by 3.0 with a good centimeter of clearance all around. Really cool. This thing is super versatile. Like I said, you can run 27.5 plus. You could run regular 27.5. You could run 29. You could run 29 by 3.0. You can also run 27.5 by 4.0 so it can you know, blend into that fat bike category. That's not like the ultra massive fat bikes that are going to be the best for big snow. RSD has another model for that, but this does allow you to kind of skirt those shoulder seasons and have a fat bike option all in one bike. It's designed around a 27.5 by 3.0 like we've got it here. So that's how we're going to review it first. And that's how I've decided to build it up. But I will be testing it as a 29 plus as well as well as the 27.5 by 4.0. Now, when you do run those bigger tires, it raises the bottom bracket a little bit more. That makes it more playful, makes it manual, makes it pop up and wheelie a little better, but it does make it feel a little more on the bike, at least in past bikes I've ridden. With a higher bottom bracket, you feel more on top of the bike than down low in the bike. We'll see if that really translates or if that's just all in our head when we look at the geo charts. Really cool build spec on this. This came in at 32.88 pounds. It's a little bit heavier bike. A lot of that's the cassette I've got on here. We've got this really wide rear wheel, which is a little bit heavy. The bigger tires get a little bit heavier. Lots of little things like that, but they're solid parts. We have a full race face cockpit, race face bar, race face stem, race face cranks, race face bottom bracket. We got a Sun Ringle Duroc 50 rear wheel, full external routing on everything. The dropper goes in the seat tube here. Really cool. I love seeing that. Love seeing the shorter seat tube on this model small gusset, nice long reach, and shorter rear end than the V4. 
should mean this thing can get playful and goof around a little bit more like its sibling, the middle child. That bike is one of my favorite hooligan bikes just for playing around and goofing around. It's become a favorite on this channel, and I think this one has the potential to be a favorite as well. Really like this DVO Diamond D3 that we've got on it. Super solid fork, especially for the price. There's really nothing on here that you look at and you're just like, Ooh, I don't know about that component. The components look solid, really solid. While we're talking about components, this also comes with some really nice ergon lock-on grips. Unfortunately, one of mine cracked. It was a manufacturing defect. When I tightened it down and I really wasn't torquing it, the little plastic on the clamp here split. And it's different enough that you can't run your metal clamps on this. So props to RSD for running Ergon grips, really great grips. A lot of companies use throwaway grips on their bikes to bring the, the cost down, but that's just more waste and you end up replacing those anyway. These I would not be replacing if this one hadn't had a defect. So I swapped my own Ergons on here. I'm running SRAM Axis GX Eagle wireless drivetrain because it's easier for me to build bikes. It saves me time when I build bike after bike after bike every week. Uh, it doesn't come with that setup. A couple of these parts are mine. I'm running Crank Brothers Stamp 1 pedals, the composite ones. First time trying these. I'm excited to try them out, see what I like about them. I actually like a little bit smaller pedals. Most people like huge pedals. I like smaller pedals. I feel like I can get a little bit more body English into the bike that way. I don't know, personal preference there. Uh, what else? We've got an NX cassette on here. That's part of the reason this bike's coming in heavier. I got my Paul dropper lever on a TransX dropper for this build. And up front, I've got my Knight Composites 45i rim with a 27.5x30 up front. This thing looks like such a bruiser and such a cool explorer too. I remember the V3 was super fun to explore. We've also got rack mounts on it. I think this could be a fantastic bike packing bike especially if you like plus tires and bigger tires and the versatility to being able to run those four rows if you wanted all right let's get this thing on the geo meter and see what the geo looks like so at the time of filming rsd doesn't have their geo chart yet up on this new one i got this a little bit before it was published and so we're going to measure the geo ourselves see what it looks like rear center nice and short man 422 actual chain stay 428 here hardtail geometry has gotten so good and it's thanks to companies like rsd who are willing to push it nice 460 mil reach on this front center 765 bottom bracket drop is 40 mil so that tells us it is optimized for 27 fives that bottom bracket should feel really good for 27 fives so with 29ers, that's going to raise the bottom bracket a little. Most 29ers are in the, these days, 50 to 60 mil range. So it's a little bit higher than a lot of 29ers, but spot on and maybe even low and planted for 27.5s, especially 27.5 plus. Stack is 627 millimeters. Great stack. And I love that they kept the steer tube so long so that I could raise and lower the stem to get that dialed in. Head angle, 65.2. And I'm measuring at the stanchion, and in my experience, the stanchions are always a little bit slacker than the steer tube, but this is the easiest place for me to measure it consistently. 65.2, very nice. 74.2 seat angle, that's effective and actual. Effective top tube is 618. So these geo numbers are right where I would want to see them on a bike like this. That's 65.2 degree head angle, which means it's not an absolute slayer that just wants black diamonds and double black diamonds which is good i think when we're approaching the 64 63 i've got some bikes coming in that are 61.5 super slack stuff starts to be more specialized toward a certain type of riding that's just really steep fall line stuff and that's fun if you got a lot of it but most people don't and it's not as versatile on the greens and blues i think this bike's going to be really fun still on the greens and blues but still have a slack enough head angle to be able to handle those spicy double black diamond moments when you need them. Hardtail geometry and hardtail design has come so far just in the last three, four or five years. This bike, if it were a vehicle, at least on paper, would be like a Jeep JKU, a four door Jeep on 37s, I'm gonna say. Quite capable, not a full on rock crawler. It can still take your kids to school safely and not be totally overdone, but super capable. And I just think of something like this as what most people need in a bike to go explore and just connect and have fun. And so I do my bike consultation over on Patreon where I talk with people and help them pick the right bike for their budget and riding style. 
And a lot of people are looking for something like this. They're not chasing down Strava times. They're not uh, trying to ride every double black diamond as fast as possible. They're getting out and exploring. And sometimes they get off the beaten path. Sometimes there's a creek crossing. Sometimes they're spending the night out on the trail with their bike with carrying a whole bunch of stuff. And something like this will fit that to a T. If you enjoy exploring and getting out in nature and disconnecting more than just flying through as fast as possible, something like the Sargent V5 could be a really good option for you. But we're gonna see how it rides. We gotta take it out on the trail and review it. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss that, make sure you're subscribed. If you enjoy these videos where I put different size tires in there, show what fits and what doesn't, I don't know other people doing that. If that's helpful to you in your purchasing decision, say thanks by using one of the links below. And if you want buy consultation advice where you pick my brain on all the 80 plus different hardtails I've ridden, and probably 20 plus different full suspensions I've ridden but don't talk about on the channel, and you wanna pick my brain on that when we're bike shopping and make sure you get the right bike for you, become a patron. You can sign up for a month at a time, cancel at any time. I love helping people do that. Alex at RSD is awesome and he's hooking you guys up with a 5% off code for anything RSD. Just use coupon code PARTY when you check out, whether it's a fork or a frame or a complete bike like this Sargent V5. Super cool of him to do that for you guys. If you were to get a Sergeant V5, how would you build it up? 27.5, 27.5 plus, 29, 29 plus, or 27.5 by 4.0? And where would you take it? I'm curious to hear. Thanks for geeking out on bikes with me. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. <laughs>